So in terms of expansion, the Tulsa Oilers are the newest team to the Indoor Football League. Not the best season. However, building with what they did last season, can year two be even more of a success compared to what they endured in 2023? Let's go in the alley and find out. Hey guys, welcome back to In the Alley. My name is Cody, and tonight we're going to be previewing the penultimate team for 2024, the Tulsa Oilers football team, not the hockey team, the football team. They have the same name, owned by the same people. I don't know why my camera's focusing like that. If you see a little jump, I apologize. I don't know what's going on, but anyway, Tulsa Oilers football team, not the best season, their inaugural year, hoping to build on that success for 2024. The history is going to be very, very, very brief. We'll talk schedule. We'll talk players coming back, players that have left, and see if there's anything we can look forward to in 2024. But with that being said, let's just go take a quick, quick, brief, quick look at their history. So as the history tab pops up here, uh, there's just not a lot to talk about. There's just <laughs> They've only played one year. This is the Tulsa Oilers football team. They're located in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Head coach is Marvin Jones. The arena is the BOK Center. 16,582 for a capacity. I'll just kind of reminisce so I can fill some time here. But I love Tulsa. Like I said, I spent two years there, my final two years of high school. I went to uh, every single Tulsa Talons game that I could that I was there. And uh, I'll tell you right now, uh, high school Cody was a lot thinner than... uh, than middle-aged Cody right now. But, yeah, I love the BOK Center. I love Tulsa. If you've never been, I highly recommend getting down to Tulsa. It is a great place to, you know, visit, great place to stay. I love it. I wish I could go back there. I, I, I need to get back there and watch an arena football or indoor football game. So, yeah, uh, I love it. I wish them all the best and the success down there in Tulsa. I've been down there for uh, Oiler hockey games. Uh, we've gone down there for like New Year's and Christmas hockey games and stuff like that. It's been awesome to go see, but no championships to speak of. 2023 record two and thirteen, seventh seed in the East. Last five years, we just said it two and thirteen didn't qualify for the playoffs. Worst overall record in the indoor football league. Someone had to be, but yeah, that's their history. Not not a lot else to it. So. Uh, Let's go check out their schedule. We'll check out the players, final thoughts, all of that stuff. Kind of cruise along here as a shorter video probably. But, yeah, let's go check out their history, see if we can find more than two wins this season. All right, so the schedule tab is going to pop up here. And uh, it's just one of those schedules. They've got 13 straight games in the middle, bye week to start, bye week in the third week, one bye week towards the end of the season. Good news is for them, though, is they do close out with four of their final games at home. That just means they're on the road for quite a bit, though, Uh, including three straight road games there in the middle of the season. It's going to be a tough little tough little stretch. But, you know, they play they play Frisco twice. It's early on in the season. Could they shock them? Maybe. I'm not sure. They play Sioux Falls home and home, Quad City home and home. Massachusetts and Green Bay home and home, Jacksonville home and home, Iowa home and home. You're you're catching the drift here. Uh, the only two teams in the West that they play, they play home against San Diego and they are at San Antonio. So they do play po- both Texas teams, which is nice for travel purposes, I guess. But yeah, those uh, that like five game stretch there, like directly in the middle of the season, where you've already played what four games, and then you're home against Jacksonville at Green Bay, at San Antonio, at Massachusetts, home against San Diego, and then you bookend it at Jacksonville. And I guess you could throw Sioux Falls in there as well. That's just a brutal schedule right there. Um, safe to say, though, I do think that this team could capitalize. They did uh, They did win the state of Iowa last year. They beat Quad City and Iowa for their only two wins. So I could see them beating Iowa and Quad City <laughs> again. I could see them beating Green Bay. Uh, I could see them maybe even sne- even sneaking out a win against a San Diego or sneaking, maybe they pull an upset against a Frisco or something like that. Never say never. I personally don't really see it, but I could see this team maybe 
doubling their win total, maybe getting to five or six wins at the most. It's just it's still a brutal schedule when you look at it. Playing playing home and homes is is good. You're not necessarily playing anyone three times. You have a fairly decent draw against the two teams in the West that you do play. But yeah, overall, like I said, do I see them sweeping teams? Not necessarily. Could they sweep Green Bay? Plausible. But could they sweep Quad City? Plausible. Same thing with Iowa. It's just I don't necessarily see them getting close with Jacksonville. I don't see them getting close really with Sioux Falls. I don't really see them really close with Frisco. And I'll be honest with you, San Antonio could probably probably surprise some people as well. So I don't know. Uh, like I said, it's nice to have that you know little home stretch there at the end in case you are in some sort of playoff position. But ultimately, 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 I. I still think this is kind of a work in progress and we'll, we'll talk about the players returning and stuff like that. And I have my, my thoughts about that as well, but that's their schedule. Like I said, they kind of alternate home and away at the very, at the very beginning of the schedule. And then it's three straight away games kind of alternate and then four out of five on the road. So this team, uh, this team has a little ways to go here, but I think they will be more competitive in 2024 than they were in 2023. Fan support is great. The ownership is great. Like I said, th- things should be looking upwards for this team. I just don't necessarily think they're in a spot for the playoffs just yet. Unless they catch fire, which is a great segue because if they have the players, they could do it. Eh? Eh? We're going to go talk about the players, right? Yeah, Good segue. Let's go talk about the players leaving and the players coming back. All right. So players returning, players leaving. And Tulsa, I think... Again, I'm not in Marvin Jones's head. I'm not him. I'm not any of these coaches, so I don't know what they're thinking. But for me, they have resigned what over 50% of the team that they had last year. It seems uh, they do bring back a lot of players that they had from last season. Last season didn't work out that well, so it's 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 a bold strategy, Cotton. We'll see how it plays out. But the one player the one position they didn't necessarily resign was quarterback we'll talk about that in players lost and probably final thoughts but let's start out with uh, wide receiver joshua crockett 47 receptions 502 yards 18 touchdowns 650 kick return yards and one kick return touchdown i think he's probably going to be the go-to wide receiver uh I, I don't have the stats in front of me right now i can't remember if he was the leading receiver or if alexis rosario w- uh was they're both returning. Montero Dubose is returning. Jonathan Nance is returning. Like the entire wide receiving core is returning from last season. The offensive line is returning from last season, including Jake Balderrama, who got signed from Duke City. So they they have the entire offense returning here. I forgot Trey King as well. I forgot about the running back position. Trey King returns as well. So like I said, it's the entire offense is pretty much returning, except that quarterback position. If you hit that right, is that enough to get it done? I'm not necessarily sure. That's the issue that I have. They went through quite a few quarterbacks, and again, we'll talk about that here in a second. But for Joshua Crockett, Jonathan Nance, Alexis Rosario, Montero Dubose, whoever's catching those passes or catching passes out of the backfield, if you're Trey King or whoever they bring in, uh, I think that quarterback position has to be important for them. I think being able to get a guy that can throw you the ball consistently and have that same guy. You know, I'm going to pick on Iowa here for a second, but going through multiple different quarterbacks could have messed with the timing, could have messed with the chemistry. I'm not saying that's the case. I'm saying that could be a factor, especially in the middle of the season where you don't have time to practice. You bring a guy in, it's like, all right, you're starting. And that's kind of what happened last year. They went through multiple quarterbacks, and I'm not sure if that was kind of what happened, but it could be. It could, it could not be. That's just my, my feeling and my thinking towards it. Could be wrong. I'll be happy if I'm wrong. But I think in order for these wide receivers to really, really, really pop off, you need consistent quarterback play. So Joshua Crockett, he's returning. The entire wide receivers, the entire offense is returning. So I think if you can get that consistent quarterback play, I, I think this offense could be could be good. But moving over to the defensive side here, Linebacker Jordan Jones. It's also last year, 113 tackles. <coughs> Excuse me. 
113 tackles, three tackles for a loss, two sacks, three interceptions, five pass breakups, four force, four fumble recoveries, two force fumbles, one blocked kick, one safety. Uh, the rest of the grocery list is on the other side. This man was this man was just like a one man defense. Look at those stats. <laughs> Look at those stats, man. 2023 first team all indoor football league. 2023 all rookie. He did this in his first year. He did this in his first year in the indoor football league, man. 113 tackles. I mean, my God, what more do you need? Golly, this man was good. This man was great, and he's re-signed with them. That is the anchor of your defense right there. That is the anchor of your defense right there. Everything runs through him. They signed quite a bit on the defensive side of the ball, too. I'm not saying they re-signed their entire defense. They've kind of revamped their defensive line. Jordan Jones can play defensive line. He can play linebacker. We'll talk about, obviously, the third guy here, but you know, Jordan Jones isn't afraid to get down there on, on, on the defensive line and get after it, but I, I think his position would probably be better towards that linebacker spot. That being said, I think Adrian Hernandez kind of was a hybrid between offense and defensive line. I'm curious to see if he will play more defensive line this season. I'm curious to see how that relates, but yeah, uh, with, with Jordan Jones probably being that linebacker, we're going to talk about Trey Harvey. Linebacker, defensive back last season, 66 and a half tackles, three tackles for a loss, six pass breakups, one forced fumble, and two blocked kicks. What more do you need? I mean, they, they do bring back quite a bit on their secondary as well. I mean, they're bringing back Brito Tut, Ryan McIntyre. Uh, they're bringing back Taylor Hawkins. They've signed Michael Witherspoon from Northern Arizona and Vegas. They've signed Travian Bryant from the Tucson Sugar School. So they are packed to the brim full of veteran talent. This team is good. They've packed in talent that they have signed from other teams. They've brought back players that they think can contribute. This is why I think this team can win more games this season. The question becomes, though, can that defense keep them in games enough? And again, we'll we'll talk here with players lost, but can this team keep this can this defense and maybe even the offense keep this team in games to maybe squeak out some upsets or maybe even win convincingly? That's the issue that I'm at. Let's go talk about players lost right now. I mean, I I feel bad not talking enough about Trey Harvey, but while his stats are good, there is so much on that defense that that contributed that I don't want it to be lost that. He's a he's a key returner. He can play linebacker. He can play defensive back. You have defensive backs returning, so I don't want to see him get lost in the shuffle. He has earned his spot to start. It's up to him to obviously keep that spot. But we'll see if Jordan Jones plays any defensive line. I'm curious to see that whenever their you know their game kicks off against Frisco. I'm really really interested to see how this defense comes together though. But like I said, let's go talk about players lost, and then we'll probably get out of here with uh, some final thoughts. All right, key losses here. We're going to start off with Andre Sale. Like I said, you pretty much brought back your entire offense, so I've got to put someone here, and that's kind of how these key losses are going to be. But quarterback Andre Sale, 1,101 passing yards, 23 passing touchdowns, 59 rushing yards, and six rushing touchdowns. He was all right. I mean, like I said, they went through multiple quarterbacks last season just trying to figure out what would stick. I it's it's kind of hard to to determine the success of Tulsa or however however many games they could have won last season. When you go through Damian May, Bobby Froelich, Giovanni Sanders, Vincent Espinosa, and Andre Sale, there's not a lot of continuity. Like I said, I could be completely wrong here. The entire time I've said this, but I I personally think that multiple quarterbacks in, in any outdoor indoor whatever you got to work on that timing, that chemistry with the wide receivers or tight ends or running backs or whatever. So having multiple guys come in and just play one game, two games, whatever the case could be, I think that really kind of throws off the chemistry of the team. Injuries obviously play a factor, but I, I think they were just trying to find a guy damn near each week. They settled on Andre Sale. He was at Duke City. He ended up coming over here, and he's off to a rival league. So... I don't think it's necessarily a key loss. They've got enough guys here trying to make uh, trying to make the starting quarterback role. They've got uh, former XFL quarterback and Jawan Pass. They've got Daniel Smith, who was at Iowa last year. So, and, and they've got another rookie in Lafayette, right? Which I'm not 
I, I don't know enough about him yet, but that's kind of your three quarterback battle right now. If the transactions page and what Tulsa has put out is correct, so I'm interested to see how the how the starting quarterback is going to impact this team and who actually wins it. I don't know if there's a clear cut favorite, but like I said, whoever wins it is probably deserving so, and I'm curious to see how he's going to fit in with that offense. But defensively, like I said earlier, uh, let's talk about Gibson Zaya. 51 and a half tackles, 12 tackles for a loss, four sacks, three pass breakups, one forced fumble, and one blocked kick. He was a major starter on that defensive line, and I think that might be a point of contention for them this season. They've kind of retooled it. They've brought in Chima Dunga or Chima Dunga from Sioux Falls Storm. Uh, I just I just said his name. Uh, Jordan Jones obviously is going to be a key factor if he does play defensive line. They've brought in Michael Badajo from the San Diego Strike Force, and uh, the name I was blanking on was Adrian Hernandez. Like I said, I don't know if he's going to be playing defensive back, but uh, Chima Dunga or Chima, please correct me what the correct pronunciation is. And Michael Badajo, I think could be just as good as Gibson Zaya remains to be seen but I think that is kind of a key loss 51 and a half tackles and 12 tackles for a loss is nothing nothing to sneeze at uh, they lost Eric Sadler as well so I'm curious to see how this defensive line is going to get retooled needless to say like I said you you brought back Jordan Jones you've got Trey Harvey you brought back all that secondary you have signed a lot of secondary, veteran secondary. You can't forget the rookies that are coming in. So I'm curious to see how that defensive line is going to work. I'm not saying it's not going to work, but I'm curious to see what they bring in, who gets to start, who gets to play. It's curious to me to see how they're going to go about it. I think the defensive line was pretty decent last year for Tulsa, but hey, they're retooling regardless. But uh, finally, defensive back Kelvin Jenkins. Uh, I had to put someone, I guess. They bring back a lot of their defensive secondary, man. So 44 and a half tackles, one interception, six pass breakups, and two fumble recoveries. It's kind of hard. I mean, like I said, they the you can put a running back here, a key loss of a running back, but they didn't really make an impact. Like they were there, but you know, whether it was Joel Shaw, Trey King, which I know he's returning, but I, I mean Edward Vander was there for a couple of games. Like they just not a lot of running backs stayed around for a couple of games, you know. So I, I go with the secondary here. Kelvin Jenkins was there for quite a bit. I mean, he was there for how many how many games was he there for? All fifteen. I thought you started all fifteen games. He was there for all fifteen. So putting him there, he's a key starter. Sucks to see him go, but yeah, I think they have solidified that defensive secondary. Whoever starts they're probably going to cut a player or two when it comes to that, but I, I'm I'm curious to see how this defense is going to go. It's kind of like a Green Bay in the sense where I think this defense is going to be good enough to, I think this defense is going to be good enough to keep Tulsa in games. Is it going to be enough to win them games? That's the question. Quarterback plays another thing, but is the defense going to be good enough to win them games, keep them in games, win turnover battles? That's that's what I'm going to be looking for here. But let's go give our final thoughts on the Tulsa Oilers for 2024, and we will get on out of here. Okay, so final thoughts on the Tulsa Oilers. There's not much to say. Like I said, not much that I haven't already said from the schedule or players returning or players lost. I think it comes down to can your retooled defensive line get after opposing quarterbacks, number one. And number two, can your quarterback do what is necessary to get the ball to the returning wide receivers, running back? Is he mobile enough to break the pocket if he needs to, extend plays, do what he has to do? I think if the answer to those questions is both like yes or, you know, they can. I think Tulsa can probably win, I'd say about six games. I, I, I'd say maybe even seven. <laughs> uh, I, th- this team should be improved. This team should be improved from last year. I look for them to probably win a couple of games they probably shouldn't. Simple as that. I think they can catch a team off guard that you sit there and go, oh, wow, that's uh, that's incredible. I didn't think that they'd win that game. I 
they'll probably beat teams that they should beat. Like I said, they, they've got Iowa, Green Bay, Quad City. Maybe they catch Sioux Falls sleeping. Maybe they get San Diego. I'm not necessarily sure. It Obviously, you know, everything being even, take injuries and everything out of the equation. They're trying to run it back. That's a concern for me. But one of the things that I do admire or do like when it comes to the indoor game is having continuity. If you can keep bringing those players back and they can keep working as a team and building that chemistry, because there's a lot of turnover. If you can build that chemistry, then you know the tendencies. Knowing those tendencies between your teammates can help you really build continuity to win those games and be you know a full unit. So, I don't know. I, I, I'm curious to see if, if bringing most everyone back works, finding that quarterback that clicks. If they do, like I said, they, they could win six or seven games. I don't really see them winning more than that. That's the tough part. I don't really see them winning more than that. I don't necessarily see them going winless. I don't even see them as the worst team in the indoor football league this year. I don't. I I think this team is going to be improved. It might not be improved by some other people's standards, but it, it might be improved by like maybe four or five wins. I'm thinking six or seven max, but they could win five. They could win six. I I'd probably say five or six is probably where you know my comfort level is at with this team. I, I, I just don't really know. It's such a brand new team. It's not like there's a history to build on or like this team's made the playoffs four years in a row. You got one year to base it off of, so it's kind of tough. I mean, you can base it off of where these players were a few years ago, whether they were even with a team that is on hiatus or you know a team that might not exist anymore. Like... It's hard to base it off of where a player was just a couple years ago, different schemes, different whatevers. So it's tough to gauge. It's really tough to gauge. I, I, I think this team will be improved. It's just not playoff worthy. But I think the improvement will keep fans around as long as you keep improving, keep building on that, fan engagement, whatever the case could be. So, like I said, I'm looking at probably five or six wins for this team and building on that success. Really, really trying to win those games at home. <clears throat> Excuse me. Really trying to win those games at home, trying to bring those fans out, trying to do what they can in order to keep progressing in the win category. You know, you won, you won two last year. If you won what, five or six this year, maybe you can push for a playoff spot in year three and really start chugging along. So... I'm curious to see how that goes. The defense might be able to keep them in games if the offense can start clicking. Maybe this team catches fire, and this is the surprise team we're all talking about. I'm not necessarily certain, but that being said, guys, I'm going to sign off here. We have the final team preview tomorrow, the Vegas Nighthawks. And if you want to talk about a mystery, a team shrouded in mystery, it is the Vegas, the Vegas Nighthawks. But we will talk about them tomorrow. Until then, I'm going to sign off here. Typical stuff, typical stuff, typical stuff. Like, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff. Appreciate you guys watching my videos. We're almost done. We got Vegas. We've got a predictions, you know, playoff predictions video. And, yeah, it's it's game week. It's it's game week. We got six days. What, five days? Six days? Whatever. And I record one night, upload it the next day, so my days are screwy. By the time you're watching this, it's going to be Tuesday. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, five days. So we got five days. So yeah, guys, uh, love you guys. Appreciate you guys watching. Yeah. Uh, like comment, subscribe, all that stuff, blah, blah, blah. YouTuber things. And, uh, until then guys, 